Hey, I'm Shelly, your practice management consultant here in New York. Can't wait to introduce you to my friend, Andy Cleveland. And get this, he is an accounts receivable ninja. Welcome, Andy. Hey, thanks for such a glowing uh, introduction. Like, you know, if everything just ended today, I'd just be happy that you've introduced me in such a positive light. Thanks, Shelly. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. This is fun. I'm glad we have a chance to connect. Well, with a name like Ninja, Receivables Ninja, how can we not chat? <laughs> so, what are you, by the way? We need to come up with a nickname for you. You need a good name for me. I have what yet should we to do? figure that out. <laughs> yeah, we're going to work think. on that. Yeah, we'll see what people call me in the list. <laughs> um, I Guys, I brought Andy on because... We had a conversation several years ago, maybe three years ago, and he said something that stopped me in my tracks. And I thought we should just hang on that sliver for a second of that conversation because right now I think you'll find it valuable. And one thing, Andy, when you, you deal with receivables all the time, mm -hmm. when do people try to send receivables to you? I mean, listen, it's kind of, if, if Dennis are on the show right now, this is the analogy. Okay. <laughs> People want a crown on a tooth that can't be saved. It's they essentially it. the same thing. By the time most practices think about doing something from a collection standpoint, that bill, it cannot be saved. It's gone. It's time to pull it. It's going to hurt. It's traumatic for the dentist and the patient, but it's basically done. We typically don't respond quick enough. Yeah. Yeah. What? So that's what I'm seeing. Like right. the collection process in the office doesn't start until it's right. actually too late. It yeah. needs to be written off and they're surprised at that. So I haven't seen anyone say, stop, let's back up the time clock and talk okay. about when we should be sending it to collection. Right. When and again, and just another super annoying analogy, right? Okay. Like we should drink eight glasses of water a day, right? Yes. We should eat fruits and vegetables. We should <laughs> get our 15,000 steps in. That's the perfect world, which maybe some of you people live in. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm in the real world, right? Where those things don't happen. So yeah, I think it's important we give best practices, but we also have to be realistic. I mean, this is, we're in the height of a pandemic right now, if you didn't notice, Shelly. Yeah, exactly. So even just having people doing this stuff is, is really challenging. A lot of the practices I'm talking to right now yeah. haven't even been getting bills out the door. They've been, they're, they're overbooked. They yeah. got people coming in. People yeah. are, you know, wanting to stay home. Staff are calling out. So it's more challenging than ever. By the way, what was your question again? It was a really good <laughs> one, and I just went off on a tangent. So, so the timeline. Timeline. Ideally, so right. a person is going to send something to the collection with the right. hopes that you're going to return that money back. Now, right. when is optimal time versus too late? Yeah, I mean, and whether no matter what collection company you choose to use. Mm -hmm. We all operate in the same environment where you have, there's a, the more recent it is, the younger the account is, the easier it is to collect. doesn't matter who you hire, whether you do it internally, you send out purple statements, you send it over to XYZ company, time depreciates the account. Every day that ticks by, a, part, a very small chunk loses its collectability. So, so the key is showing- time. Go ahead. That's right. So the key is do it as early as you feel comfortable. Most practices, in my opinion, uh, we're trying to educate people around the 60 to 90 day mark is typically when it needs to be sent because that's when the internal effectiveness plateaus, right? Because that yeah. patient's trashed two or three statements, a phone call, whatever. They've kind of blown you off for about 90 days. That's typically where it plateaus or drops. And that's where you need someone else to step in and communicate with that party. Sorry for laughing. We are talking about being bombed by a cat. So we have a rescue here. In case you heard all the meowing, it wasn't my 
Wasn't I'm allergic, noise. by the way, so hopefully that won't bother me. <laughs> we did have a little tail coming in the in the window there. I didn't want you to miss the point. Sorry, I was laughing, and you were at the actual no, point. Oh, that's awesome. Said, I'm pretty sure he heard him 60 to 90 days. Yep. That's shocking to people. Oh, my gosh. Some of these offices, the patient's actually only getting a statement, their second statement as 60 to 90 days right unbelievable right. i mean you're grouped in with everyone else in america i mean your house your car student loans credit cards utility bills are all in a monthly cycle right so if you're only doing it once a month you're automatically getting grouped in with every other vendor that they owe and right, right. who who's going to get paid first the mortgage or the dentist exactly the exactly. car payment or the dentist that's, the cell yeah. phone or the dentist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have to do things a little bit differently to get a different result. So I love, you know, our conversation about doing things uh, twice a month. There's no way. Why don't you do an at 15? So I'm so and glad. And wheel gets the grease. I'm so glad you're saying that because there's a disconnect. So I'll ask the financial coordinator, how often does your patient get a statement? Right. And they will say, gosh, we send statements weekly or we right. send a statement the second the, the insurance checks entered. And I'm like, great. Right. But tell me one more time, how often does the patient receive it? That's right. Because you send it. Oh, when unbeknownst to you, you're not realizing your software set up on a timer that it won't resend if they've received it in a certain amount of days. So very often yeah. they inside we're sending statements, but the patient only receives probably one a month. And sometimes so, not even that. Whoa. Um, I've talked to a lot of practice owners that think that everything's fine. Everything's going out regularly. And then once we do a deeper dive, we find out statements haven't gone out for 60 days. Whoa. Nine days. That hurts my heart. <laughs> well, scary. and also think, of, think about the staffing changes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, dental offices, even now more than ever, are leanly staffed because people are getting sick. Well, yeah. if you don't have people doing this work, I mean, you know, we all have to focus on what's important that day. Insurance, everyone's going to be on it, right? That's where your easy money is. But getting statements is often one of the last things that people think about. So you can either do it yourself, DIY, like fixing uh, plumbing or mowing your lawn. You can do it yourself or you can hire someone else to help you with it. It really depends go. on, you know, your resources. Do you, do you have the ability? Is it reasonable for you to do it? Or does it just, like a lot of other things, just say, you know what, it's not worth it for us to do that. Right. You know, I need another part-time or full-time person. I'd rather just have someone else do it for me. True. So, so that's a yeah. good resource that everyone feel free to check out. Dan. He has all kinds of um, businesses that he's affiliated with that can help you get your billing out. Um, you even talked to me a little bit about technology that you can use yeah. to speed up this cycle, right? Yeah. I mean, there's all these different, you know, a lot of people just keep doing like statements through their software provider, yeah. which I get it. It's very easy and it's very inexpensive, mm -hmm. but a lot of it looks like junk mail. It just looks like an EOB or anything else, right? And we all get inundated with, with junk every day. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times they're not as effective. And now, you know, you can, there's different ways that you can text statements, you can email. Mm -hmm. There's all these different technologies I to help it. deliver the message and make it convenient for the patient to communicate and pay. So exactly. I'm all about, right, accommodating the, the patient. That's, that's yeah. what we need to do. The practices are loving the text to pay, texting statements. I heard a statistic the other day, 98% of the texts will get answered. They get yep. received. So that's, we can't say that for sending statements the old fashioned way. It's, it's often a pile or slides right. down the car seat when they go to the post office, right? It's underneath yeah. the, seat of the car. What do, you, what do you see in your practices, Shelly? Like, do you see any trends either pre or post COVID right now that, are alarming from a billing perspective or different? So, yeah, definitely I'm seeing shorthanded. I'm, or if they have the right amount of team, the phone volume is so through the roof. Right. That working on practice systems has dropped down a little bit. 
Okay. So I, I have put all of our attention into them getting a credit card on file when they book the appointment. Right. We blame it on COVID, blame it on the pandemic. Right. But right. all these practices that weren't able to do that in the past, now they say we're doing touchless when we call and get you scheduled. We'll get your credit card on file for any out of pocket. Yep. Um, they already have the insurance information. The patient can walk in, walk out. They can get them scheduled separate. But yep. our financial concerns are cared for. Right. And I guess that's kind of the message I want to state that if you're sending statements, something fell apart already. Either right. we didn't get the copay right or we didn't get a form of payment on file. Mm -hmm. So we're already in a bad way. Yep. It's taking more labor, more time. But you you were the one that taught me for the offices there at the statement phase. Right. To to look at the setting and get it so that the patient, when the insurance checks entered, boom, they get an instant. Yep. Think of it now, you can instantly text the statement. It's After amazing. that, yeah. After that, two weeks later, if you haven't heard, okay, it already yep, yep. should have been taken care of when the patient was there. Give them two weeks, send them a statement. Two weeks again, two weeks again. By then, this isn't working, right? right. Why are you yep. going to put this on? Something has to happen different. And I guess that's the part. People don't know when to pivot, okay? Right. Turn the volume of the statement every couple weeks and know when to say they're not responding. What are we gonna do now? And that's-, yeah, I mean, that's and all you have to do is look at your AR. Look at your 30, yeah. 60, 90 plus bucket right now. Yeah. And see, that will tell you the story. You are and, right. it, and it is frustrating too, because people sometimes say, you know, I, basically we treat problem, we treat symptoms, right? That's what, what we do, right? We treat mm -hmm. symptoms. I don't treat root causes. That's what I leave, leave it up to really great consultants like yourself to actually <laughs> fix the problem, right? Like right. train people at the front how to collect and be nice and to do that smoothly and offer different financing terms mm -hmm. and to make that, you know, it's just like going to the gas station when you pump, right? You just, you put in your card because you know it's expected. And mm -hmm. sometimes we don't have high enough expectations for our clients or yeah. our patients, I should say. So. Yeah. That's why I leave, you know, curing the problem. That's up to people, really great people like you that know what you're doing and how dental offices right. are cracked, or, you know, run. We just deal with basically symptoms. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, to sum it all up for our offices, let's get ahead of this thing. My goal, as much as I appreciate everything you do, is that our offices never have anything to send you. Sorry. I agree. I hate to tell I, you I'm that, but that. it's not reality today. So we absolutely need to work yeah. on that process. And um, for any of you that are interested or want some information, check below because we're going to have a little uh, one sheet that just makes suggestions of how yeah. to go statement-free. It is possible. Yep. Yeah that we we can start that moving forward and any of the stuff that's been sitting there i can promise you 90 percent of that yeah is probably too late maybe not you right. can do miracles so let's just uh give a give a call and we'd love well, to help so i have one question for you okay. i know we're trying to wrap up because we don't want to drone on and on because then no one will listen to us but okay so right now just being real um, do you look at practices websites when you consult with them typically, Shelly? Interesting. I do. Before I go in, or if anyone makes a request to me, I do check it out. Okay. So there's a spotlight on you right now. Out of 10 dental offices, how many dental offices would you say have a pay now button on their website? Not very many. Yep. So to all the practices out there, one of the coolest things you can do, and it's so inexpensive, it's ridiculous, mm -hmm. is put a pay now button on your website. True. That's Go to your merchant true. services provider or your website provider. Mm -hmm. You can get that done. Uh, if you can't, let me know. And for, you know, 15 bucks or less a month, you can get a link on your website. You could take ACH payments. That's which good. higher acceptances and no yeah. more fees on payments. All That's these technologies really are there. Nice. So 
When you no, said "Hey just, now," I'm hearing that song. I forget who sings it. "Hey now, hey now." We've got a rock hey now. star. Hey now, <laughs> exactly. But Perfect. it's all about just being convenient and, and accommodating the patient, and that's what the text to pay is so great for. They can just pay right off of a text. They don't have to like cut a check or go into their banking. You get it set up. I mean, it's Perfect. it's so easy. You just have to make a couple changes so that when you. Someone's got a stack of bills on their desk. You, your, your light just shines a little bit brighter than somebody else's. And if you do that, you're going to be very successful. Wow. It's really simple. Good words. Good words so, of advice. All righty. So it's good for the, all the offices to know that all kinds of good people are out here like this to help take a load off your plate. So absolutely reach out. Good person. Yeah. And also tell you know the viewers as we're wrapping up, Shelly's a great resource. Um, <laughs> her heart is seriously, I don't know how you fit it into that body. It, and I'm, this isn't a line. This is sincere. You have a huge heart. It's very obvious um, from you. talking to people that you work with. And I know that you do great work and that you want what's best for our fellow dentists Absolutely. out there. So if you have higher order questions, how to run your practice, you're a great resource. So I want to make sure that Thank people you. understand that. Thank you. Any time yeah. we can unburden our teams, we are all in. So there you thank go. you for spending time with us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Shelly. Thanks. Bye.